So how have your thoughts been going this year? If you're anything like me, it's been tough not to get dragged into all of the negativity that's kind of been floating around this year. Every bit of news that we see and hear just seems to be even more gloomy and negative than the last lot. Um, I was watching TV this morning and once again I was just struck by how many negatively charged words they were using. All of them kind of aimed at making us feel a little bit helpless, maybe a bit hopeless. So it was not a great feeling. Hi, I'm Marianne from One Life to Flourish and welcome to tonight's episode of uh, Monday Motivation. And tonight I am going to be talking about clearing out some of the mental crap of 2020. Now, if you know someone who might uh, enjoy hearing about this or get find it useful to get some hints, then please invite them along using the arrow somewhere down below me. Um, now, we're also going live in a few different locations. I am um, at One Life to Flourish, so that's where if you want to make some comments, you'd need to be. All right, let's dig in a little bit to what's happening actually in the news because it's kind of interesting. Let's look at, and then we're going to look at some useful hacks to actually get through and set ourselves up ready for 2021, whatever happens then. So we're living in unprecedented times where the world is paying a horrific toll. Does this sound kind of familiar? This is actually my TV news babble example that I just made up using a lot of the terms that they kind of use a lot. Now, these kinds of terms actually start to make us feel scared and worried. So why would news reports do that? Why are they kind of constantly focusing on doom and gloom kinds of words? I mean, language is a really powerful thing and obviously news media know that, and basically it's so powerful because it's something that we internalise and it kind of gets interpreted and used in different ways by our conscious and our un unconscious mind. So it is really important to be aware of what the words are around us. Now, the fact is that, you know, the reporting that is delivered to us every day could be a whole heck of a lot less emotive than what it actually is. Um, and probably once upon a time, it actually was a little bit more moderate and a little bit more neutral than it is now. But probably due to like our current 24-hour news cycle, um, maybe the, the pressure to actually get an audience with social media and all sorts of things competing means that the language that's being used is more persuasively negative if that doesn't quite make sense but basically they're using persuasive kinds of words but it's to persuade us that things are not great so why why are they, on earth are they doing this basically it's actually to get us hooked in it's feeding into one of our natural human biases and this is called the negativity bias now i've talked about this before a little bit earlier on this year when I was talking about procrastination. But this negativity bias applies to lots of things happening in our life. And essentially what it means is that we are naturally drawn to seek out um, information about things that are potentially dangerous, threatening, uh, negative all right, so it's just kind of a natural hardwired kind of thing. And once upon a time, it was there to actually help us survive because if we could see where the danger was coming from, where there was a possible threat, then we could actually do something about it and save ourselves. That was a good thing. Now, of course, the um, I suppose with all the things that happen in the world and the way the news is set up, we're actually – constantly being told about negative situations that are actually not threatening to us in the immediate a lot of the time sometimes they are I mean COVID-19 definitely we need to know a bit about what's going on with that so that we can do the best we can to get through it but if you think about over 
time what kinds of things are reported. A lot of it is stuff that just kind of stirs up negative emotion and we can't do anything about it and that's part of the problem. So, you know, it really does matter what we're actually seeing from whatever source we get our news from. And it doesn't matter if it's like TV, radio, newspaper or social media. They all feed into our negativity bias. And this becomes a bit of a problem. So if you've actually found yourself feeling more anxious, possibly less confident just generally, more worried or having more worrying kinds of thoughts than ever during this year, then just kind of have a little bit of a think. How much of your time have you actually spent watching different kinds of news and reports around things that are happening in the world. Chances are, because of the times that we're living in, you've actually been watching it a lot more than maybe you normally would have or, you know, maybe some of the stuff that's coming across to us is a lot more um, of a scary kind of nature than what it has been in the past. So, it is something to be really aware of and there's a few reasons why. There's actually been research on this, of course, because there seems to be research on everything. Um, but basically, research into the impact of negative news coverage kind of gives us a little bit of a wake-up call. So basically what this research has found, and there's been a few different kinds of research in a few different places. So this is my you know, kind of bringing together of it all. So basically, if you're seeing negative news, it can actually significantly and pretty much immediately change your mood, particularly when the focus of that negative story is around some kind of suffering and the emotional toll that it's having on someone. So think about, you know, how they interview people, what kinds of things they talk about, all of that sort of stuff. Now, it also changes the way that you personally worry about things. So in other words, it kind of increases your um, level of worry, I suppose. So, and this is after only watching about 14 minutes, if you can believe that, which is pretty scary, if, you know, it's kind of having all of these impacts on you. So basically, if you watch some of this, really negative kind of news wherever you're getting it from within 14 minutes it can actually impact on your own personal worrying um, and the things that you worry about start to feel more threatening more severe than they actually are we we actually lose our perspective on what's really happening in our life um, now of course the other thing that's tied to this is it actually sets off our stress response, our you know our fight or flight response. Um, and when we're watching negative stories, it releases stress hormones. And as has been happening this year, we actually experience a sustained crisis kind of situation. So in other words, we're constantly being bombarded with these stress hormones, this flight or fight response and because of the constancy of it it actually leads to things like anxiety depression issues with sleep and ultimately feelings of fatigue so that kind of sounds familiar with some of the things that people are talking about experiencing this year and this is why all right so we've talked about one of the problems and Basically, what's been happening this year is for most of us, our mind has just been getting filled up with this constant bombardment of negativity. So to actually get ourselves ready for the new year, whatever it's going to hold, we actually need to come up with some strategies for, deal with, for dealing with what's been happening this year to set ourselves up to be, I suppose, more resilient um, uh, mentally for whatever might happen. I mean, who knows what 2021 is going to bring. Could be great stuff. Let's hope so, but we don't know. All right, so let's go through now my tips and my hacks to actually help you. So the first few are actually around managing this whole 
bombardment of negativity through the news sources that we choose. So thinking about that 14 minutes that I talked about, obviously the first thing is actually to try and limit how much exposure you're, expo exposure you're getting to negative news sources every day. Try and keep it lower than the 14 minutes essentially. So obviously we need to know what's going on. We need to know what the rules are around, you know, the situation with COVID, but you don't have to kind of dive into it. So find out what you need to know in the way that's going to have the least impact. And sometimes that's through seeing writing rather than seeing visual images and that kind of thing. So what I found useful to do this year just to try and minimise that impact is to actually do, you know, something like instead of watching the entire news that's on the TV, I'll watch the headlines. And if there's something that comes up in the headlines that says well, there's a change to something, I might watch a little bit just to find out what that is. And then I stop watching it. I usually just turn it off, go and do something a bit more fun or, you know, have, watch, a, watch a show that's a bit more fun, something like that. And then, because I like to know what's happening with the weather, I'll then come back in at the end and actually see what's happening with the weather. All right, but I avoid all of that constant negative newscasting, starting off with what's happening with COVID and then going from there, well, what's happening here, what's happening there, and all of those sorts of things. So it's really good to actually do something nice and uplifting instead of actually watching the news because it kind of gives you a good feeling knowing, oh, I'm doing something positive for myself rather than diving into all of this negativity. Now, if you feel like you need to watch the news for, say, longer than that 14-minute um, time span, then you can actually do something that um, is called worry time. Now, this is a way for you to actually minimise the effects I would say if you get, you know, if you found your emotions really impacted by watching the news, then, you know, try and cut it down to almost nothing if you can. But if you're able to watch a bit of it, a way to process is, is to have this worry time. So essentially the worry time is a time when you stop during the day, definitely not just before you're going to bed though, but sometimes during the day and you allow yourself to worry. In other words, you check in on how you're feeling and you kind of have a process for doing that. So you go, all right, this is my worry time. What am I worried about? What am I actually thinking about that's a worry? And then what could be a logical plan for dealing, for, dealing with this worry? So kind of have something that's proactive happening. And then once you've actually finished your worry time, don't have it go, going for too long, maybe just have it for like the 15 minutes to balance out the news. Uh, but once it's finished, if you then have worrying thoughts coming into your head, just go, oh, no, I'm not going to think about that now because it's not worry time. So I'll get back to that when it's worry time you know, tomorrow or whatever. This has actually been found once again by the researchers to actually help you able to process and release a lot of the really strong worries that have been going on this year. So it's a good thing to try if, you've, if you're, if uh, you you know, wanting to do something where you're still catching up on what, what's happening in the world, but then you don't want to be too worried about it. Now, there's two other ways that you can manage your news intake. Firstly, make sure that you actually get it from a reliable source. So, you know, um, there's all different places we can get news from. And if we're just getting it from, say, social media, it actually feeds into our ne own negativity biases. So in other words, it's going to feed our worries a lot more. So try and avoid that. Now, that's, we won't go into too that too much but essentially the things that you look at get fed into the algorithm that they use and you get fed more of the same thing so so try and actually go for something that's a bit more reputable they're still going to be doing the same you know negativity bias type tricks but 
they're going to have a more balanced view of what's actually happening so that you can have um, a more balanced way of dealing with your worry perhaps. All right, so that's um, a really useful thing to do. And then secondly, it can actually be useful, particularly if your emotions are really getting down, you're really worrying or you're getting into the, the point of being anxious or even depression because we do need to know what's kind of going on around us in our community, maybe get someone else on board who's happy to do it to act as um, sort of like a news reporter for you. So they're going to give you the details that you need to know, give it to you straight without all the emotional stuff. So find someone who can do that. So it could be your partner, could be a family member, could be a close friend. Just find someone who's happy, you know, to kind of go, oh, yep, this is what they've said, this is it, blah, blah, blah. All right. So try that for dealing with the news. But the other side of it is you also need to actually boost the positivity in your life. You need to bring more positive emotions in. And this is, I suppose, one of my passion areas. And I've talked about it so much this year because I believe so strongly that we all have the ability to control our emotional state no matter what's going on around us all right so I'm going to go through some of the key things that I've talked about this year um, I have put a link into the comments to get my free happiness habits playbook so this goes back to my top happiness habits that I talked about right at the beginning of the year and then I put together into sort of a little system where you can go back and review them and actually think about how you can put them into your life but anyway let's go through what we've got so offset the negativity by surrounding yourself with some positive things so it could be a whole lot of positive sayings that really kind of speak to you in some way um, it could be some really positive images you know what things do you really love to see and think about um, make sure the people around you, at least some of them are really positive so that if you're starting to feel a bit down, you can just pick up the phone and go, hey, blah, 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 and, you know, have a nice time talking to someone. Um, and it's probably also useful to create like a positive mantra to repeat if you're starting to feel a bit overwhelmed. And it can even be one linked to the news, you know, something like, um, you know, I know the news is focusing on my negativity bias, but I don't have to do that. I can focus on the positives. That's just something off the top of my head, but some some kind of a thing that you can repeat that can actually make you feel better. All right, next thing, as much as you are able, and this can vary depending on what's happening where you're living, but as much as you are able, spend some time outside. So even if it's going out on a balcony, whatever, just try and get some sunlight, get some air into your lungs from outside. And if you possibly can, get to a natural area to go and have a walk around. So it could be like a nature walk, it could be at the beach, and then even go one step further. If you've managed to get there, take off your shoes and socks and actually stand on the ground. This has amazing um, impact on boosting your positive emotions. All right, make sleep an absolute priority. Everything, everything is much better if you get a good night's sleep. So focus on trying to get, you know, your seven hours of sleep, quality sleep each night. It's going to make you feel better, but it's also going to do a whole lot around resetting what's going on in your body and also helping to manage those stress hormones and other things that are happening in a much better way. All right. Practice mindfulness and meditation. This is an absolute must-do if you want to try and create more positive emotions in your life. And particularly if you want to try and defeat worry. And then my final tips are just get some healthy habits going. They're seriously eating unhealthy food and never exercising just kind of helps you to get into worry 
whereas doing the opposite of that helps you to get out of it all right so having beautiful whole foods having you know some exercise moving your body around you can't beat them all right so they're my top tips if you need some more you can get the happiness habits playbook it is definitely worth it if you've been struggling so we've looked at the positive we've looked at the negative basically the two ways that you have to sum up dealing with the mental crap from 2020 are to reduce and manage the amount of exposure that you're getting to news of any kind okay and then work on building up your positive emotions if you do these two things, then you'll set yourself up to be able to handle whatever 2021 brings. If it's positive stuff, then you're going to be in a great frame of mind. If it's more problems and issues, then you're still going to have tools to actually get through that in a really great way. Okay, so just a little teaser again. Um which relates to what we've been talking about. Keep an eye out for a new program that I've put together um, that is there to actually help you clear out the crap ready to face a great 2021. So this is particularly talking about mentally and emotionally. All right, after Christmas, I'm going to give you some details and you want to try and catch up on them because they're pretty amazing to start with. All right. Now, also, if you are a person who loves a bargain, then at the moment I am still doing my 12 days of cra super crazy Christmas bargains where each day I have one absolutely crazy special on services that I have for one person. And then for everyone else, there's like a super bargain where everything is at least 50% off, often a bit more. So keep an eye out for them because we've had people manage to pick up some amazing stuff for not much money, which is always a good thing around Christmas. All right. And there are some prizes that are as part of taking part in the 12 days of Christmas. All right. Thank you for joining me tonight for Monday Motivation. Next week I'm going to wrap up my little mini series on clearing out 2020. And I'm going to be talking particularly about your emotions. All right, so join me next Monday, same time, and I'll hopefully give you some inspiration to move into the new year. Goodbye for now.